When my mom died a few years ago, I realized that I didn't have any sort of archive of her existence and the time that she spent with me. That's what prompted me to kind of like pick up the camera and create this digital archive of my community, my culture, my family, the people I love. Tell the world and the people who view my work that we are here, we exist and we matter. I think like a trendsetter is a person who is a wave maker, an originator of an idea, a person who is totally themselves and, and owns their identity. I grew up in the projects in East New York. I know like what it feels like to be a black kid from this environment. When I think about where I learned beauty traditions, those ideas and those themes started in the home. So I've like constructed this family unit, kind of reminiscent of like my childhood and like moments I experienced with my mom. How are you feeling? I feel good, they look amazing. We have a scene in the kitchen and the male character uh, hot combing the woman character's uh, hair. And it brought me back to when I first asked my mom to straighten my hair. Is the ritual is you have to put the hot comb on the stove. You put a big glob of grease on your hand and you just slowly go through the motion until this kinky curly hair becomes straight. There's a, another scene of a child and an older guy shaving each other. And I try to think of like black masculinity and beauty rituals within uh, black men. I remember my dad used to shave my brother, <laughs> vice versa. So I'm trying to like replicate those like real life moments for me, honoring those traditions and then amplifying it like on a, on a larger scale to tie pop culture back into the community that is so inspired by pop culture. I am excited to see everything come together. To see all the wardrobe choices. I had a peek of like what the nails are gonna look like. I'm excited to see the hair because we made some custom like head pieces for this. There's a lot of details that I want to be able to capture. And I think the camera did a beautiful job of picking that up. Every detail that I wanted to see, I saw. And it was just the perfect amount of like richness and texture that I was like looking for because this series, like it needed that texture. I brought something with me that is like very personal. I brought my mom's ashes and I'm going to try to incorporate that into some of the shots as well. You ready? Yeah. Three minutes, test you. Time is always a concern for me. There are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of wardrobe involved in this. You know, I want to be able to capture and I want to like get through all the elements of my vision without having to sacrifice or compromise. The reason why this project is like really, really important to me is because like I've experienced like being misjudged. I believe that we can be and exist as many things. Even if I present as this jewelry, long nails, I want people to see this and one, see the art in it, but also recognize that these people kind of, they are art and like everyone should be like accepted as such. I definitely think the community that I was trying to honor will be proud of what I did today. Is working. Look at this bitch! I think that that's a beautiful thing. And I think that when I look back at those photos, when, when the models, when they see themselves, like they'll have a little bit of like their history because they all identify with the community that I'm talking about. My mom called me Landa. So <laughs> she was saying, Landa, I am so proud of you. Her urn is in some of the portraits. Even in afterlife, I kind of got to create that digital archive of her existence. So, you know, if she was here, she would, she would say, go, <laughs> keep going. Um, and I told you that you could do this.